This thing is a one-handed Bluetooth keyboard that I built. It works, but it's really just a prototype. I started recording video of the build process, and I thought it would be nice to organize them into a narrative here. So, yes, I'm one of those people. I love my loud, clackety mechanical keyboard. And it just makes me sad, deep down inside, to use the touch screen on a phone to type out my overly long emails. The 104 keys on a QWERTY keyboard just seems excessive for mobile phones, let alone augmented reality or virtual reality. Somewhere, I came across this alternative concept of a corded keyboard, where the idea is to press a combination of keys at once to indicate a single letter. Pressing multiple buttons together would be like playing a chord on piano or guitar. In this so-called mother of all demonstrations, Douglas Engelbart demonstrates a very modern word processing UI, including things like copy and paste, but in 1968. In particular though, he uses a corded keyboard. You can watch the entire demo on YouTube, I'll put the link below, and let him explain. This device over here is unique to us. It provides for you the one hand equivalent of what you can do with a keyboard. There are five keys and normally each finger sits on a key and depressing any one key at a time produces a character. And any two keys at a time also. And in fact, any combination of depressing of which there are 31 combinations. So to make my own, it turns out Adafruit has done almost all the work for me. Their Arduino clone feather board has Bluetooth and LiPo battery charging built right in. And they have wonderful tutorials, including how to set it up as a keyboard. I'm doing my design in Autodesk Fusion 360. And I didn't record this real time, but Fusion has a play button in the timeline. It doesn't really seem to have a purpose, but it's great for making a video like this. There are a couple commercial products. The BAT keyboard is obviously not very mobile and only has left or right-handed versions. The Twiddler looks like the right idea to me, but I don't much care for the button layout and the track point style mouse is just an unfortunate choice. This keyboard does have a lot in common with a video game controller, so I decided to use scavenged Xbox buttons instead of keyboard keys. I use this trackball mouse almost daily because it doesn't need a flat surface to work. It also protects my computer from anyone left-handed. Logitech does make this more ambidextrous model though. Then I discovered Logitech's wireless is proprietary, so for now, this trackball is just a placeholder. Using the sculpt tool, I tried to make an outer shell that looked like a joystick while accommodating all the buttons and trackball. There is a strong hobby community on the internet. The Spiff Quarter wiki in particular is a wealth of information, and I'm using their cording chart. To finalize the design, I added a hole to the trackball, purely for style points. Then I split the keyboard shell into two halves and added holes for the screws and buttons. Fusion 360 has a pretty neat rendering tool, so we can have some fun with their environments. And then it's time to print. I'll have Fusion generate STL files, which I can then import into Cura. I'm printing this with just black PLA using NC State's Lulzbot printers. And I guess the Z calibration was off, and so I got something a little funky. So time to print it again. And that printed much better. Uh, required some light modification with the Dremel. And then I tried sanding it with what I had lying around. That's 80 grit, 120, 220, all the way down to wet sanding with 1000, 1500, 2000. And although I didn't sand enough to get out the visible scratches, the surface is very smooth. But I decided for that amount of work, I liked the printed surface better. Then electronics. Adafruit provides libraries for the Arduino IDE. And even though it's just buttons, let's breadboard it. Then cut perf boards and solder it all up. Ah.
I forgot to hit record during final assembly, so we can skip straight to my attempt at a turntable shot, which is really just a stool with a whiteboard behind it. So how is it to use? Well, it works. The button combinations are surprisingly easy to memorize. They just become muscle memory, really. However, it's just awkward to hold. Really, absolutely terrible. But as a proof of concept, I'm quite happy with it. It demonstrates that it works. Someday, I will redesign the shell to be more comfortable and hopefully end up with something quite useful.